Hi guys, Nada here from Tech Testers and today is finally here, the day that everybody's been waiting for for a very, very long time. 7th of July, aka the launch day of the third generation of AMD Ryzen CPUs these guys right here so by now there's going to be a million reviews online already covering every single aspect of these CPUs so I'm not gonna get too technical uh, in this video I am gonna cover the basics I'm gonna see if AMD delivered on all the big promises they had for these CPUs and answer some important questions like how do they perform and are they good enough to be in your next gaming rig so let's go are most mice just too small for you? Then check out Corsair's new Ironclaw RGB wireless gaming mouse. It offers an ergonomic shape that fills larger hands nicely, a top optical sensor, fast wireless performance and is not expensive either. Check it out using the links in the description below. Now obviously we cannot talk about the new generation of Ryzen CPUs without first looking back to their previous generation, uh, the second generation of Ryzen CPUs. So when it comes to the multi-thread performance and just the pure value of a CPU, the second generation of Ryzen CPU was unmatched. But when it comes to the single core performance and when it comes to the gaming performance, especially at lower resolutions, Intel was unmatched and they also had the ultimate consumer CPU, which was the i9-9900K. Now, the Zen 2 is set to change that. So they have uh, more instructions per clock, which is better performance per clock. They have more cache, they use less power. And they're also releasing the first ever 12 core consumer CPU, which is the Ryzen 9 3900X. And that is supposed to be the new ultimate consumer CPU. So let's dive straight into our first test results. Looking at pure CPU performance, where we see AMD's promises generally come true, the new Ryzen 7 3700X makes a massive jump over the old Ryzen 7 2700X in single and multi-core performance, due to architecture improvements and higher clock speeds. 20-25% improvements in the majority of CPU-based benchmarks is a larger per-generation jump that we've seen Intel make in a long, long time. Before they started adding extra cores, you'd be happy to see that within two generations. Single core performance of the 3700X is now very close to Intel's best CPUs, and multi-threaded, it trashes the 9700K and almost goes head-to-head -head with the much more expensive 9900K. But of course, that's where the 3900X comes in. Matching or beating the 9900K in single core performance, destroying it in multi-core performance, and that at much lower power consumption. Note the consumption difference with the 2700X as well. Launch pricing is slightly above street pricing of the 9900K right now, but that is due to the 9900K being a bit older. We do expect the i9 and the Ryzen 9 to cost roughly the same in no time. Keep in mind, in this scenario, we assume that both 9900K and 3900X buyers will purchase a decent separate cooling solution, though AMD does provide an adequate cooler for stock performance if you want to save a bit. Now, the new X570 motherboards do look like they'll be a bit more expensive than the Z390 motherboards, and that puts a bit of pressure on AMD. However, many older AM4 motherboards will be compatible with these new CPUs too, and considering the lower power consumption, they should prove good enough. Newer boards will offer new PCI Express Gen 4 SSD support, but for gamers especially, cheaper B450 and X470 alternatives just seem to make more sense at the moment. We will be testing several older boards for compatibility over the next few weeks, but we just wanted to give you a baseline right now using the X470 Aorus Ultra Gaming and show that you don't lose out in performance if you do choose for a B450 or an X470 motherboard. But the big question is, should you get these CPUs for gaming. Now, we took the two high-end graphics cards, the 2080 Ti as well as the new uh, RX 5700 XT, and we tested them both on an Intel platform with an i9-9900K and a platform with these two CPUs. And the results are actually quite complicated. Previously, we saw Intel ahead of AMD in general, and in some titles by quite a margin when it came to Full HD gaming. And for a large part, that's still the case, actually. Previously, we saw AMD close the gap when it comes to the Full HD gaming and 4K gaming, 
and that too is still the case as games there become mostly GPU limited. However, we do see plenty of good news for AMD here. They're now actually ahead in some titles, even in Full HD, and in games with very high FPS requirements like CSGO or Black Ops 4, and at 4040p specifically where the RX 5700 XT is aiming at, it's fair to call both CPUs very competitive. It is worth noting that the differences are actually quite small when it comes to a more mid-range card like the RX 5700 XT, but we do see the gap widen with an RTX 2080 Ti where the 9900K still looks better in general across all resolutions. There is no doubt that game developers will find ways to further optimize games for these new CPUs, especially now that Ryzen is becoming the standard in many low to mid-range systems. But what about the majority of gamers out there and just an all-around PC users? Should you buy a Zen 2 CPU for your next gaming system? And the answer is yeah, in most cases yes. Now, the previous generation Ryzen 5 2600 was the king of mid-range systems. And with the improvements in the Zen 2 technology, uh, even though we don't have the, Ryzen, the new Ryzen 5 here yet, I do believe it is comfortably going to keep that spot. Now, in the upper mid-range class is where it gets really interesting when you have to choose between an i7 and a Ryzen 7. And actually, Ryzen 7 here looks really good. Now, it's going to differ from game to game, so if you're looking uh, into just one game and you only play one game, you should check benchmarks and make your choice based on that. But on average, when it comes to the gaming performance, Intel and AMD here are pretty similar, while the AMD is offering more power for creative tasks and doing that by using less power overall. So AMD here looks really promising. We are far from being done with these CPUs because there is a lot more testing to do uh, with the new graphics cards that just came out, with all the motherboards that came out with these CPUs, as well as all the old motherboards to see if there is any backwards compatibility issues. But for now, it is safe to say that AMD delivered quite well on the promises they made a few months ago and they released very attractive and very good CPUs. Now. If you're wondering about the new GPUs, make sure to watch the video I uh, made today as well about those. That's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comments what do you think about these new CPUs and about this review. Don't forget to give me thumbs up, subscribe, and yeah, see you in the next one. Bye!